In this video, I'll be ranking all BNM's coaster models. BNM has always been a major player in the roller coaster industry, creating highly advanced and reliable roller coasters. Some of these rankings may be controversial because it is based on my own opinion, but let's get into the list. Some of you may ask, why is the family coaster at the bottom of the list? Well, it is a family coaster. We haven't seen many family coasters made from B&M except two inverted family coasters in China and they seem to be pretty mild. I have to mention that B&M is slowly starting to create family type rides around the world with the additions of Penguin Trek, B&M's take on the Intamin Straddle Coaster at SeaWorld Orlando and Phoenix Rising, a new suspended swinging family coaster at Busch Gardens Tampa. After seeing what potential they have, the family coaster model could be placed one or two spots higher on this list. Can't wait to see what they have in store in the future. B&M's stand-up coaster model is lucky to have this spot. These coaster models were very popular in the 80s and start 90s, but the production of the stand-up train slowly began to stop because it turned out to be quite the gimmick. Standing up on a roller coaster sounds awesome, but it isn't as comfortable, especially when all the layouts in the 80s and 90s focuses on inversions and positive Gs. Many of the former stand-up trains has been replaced with flawless or sit-down trains. B&M has actually revived the stand-up coaster with Pipeline the Surf Coaster, which focuses more on airtime, giving a more comfortable ride with bouncy seats. But for now, I'll leave them at spot number 8 because I'm pretty biased. I haven't really ridden a proper stand-up roller coaster. Spot number 7 goes to the Flawless Coaster design. The Flawless Coaster became popular in the end of the 90s and the start of the millennium. The roller coaster layout still contained your typical looping B&M layout, but now riders sit with no floor underneath them, allowing their feet to swing freely above the track. The Flawless Coaster received rave reviews. Other B&M models was also inspired by the flawless idea. With that said, the model isn't as outstanding as it sounds. I've personally only ridden flawless coasters where I came out disappointed. The Demon at Tivoli Gardens is beautiful. It is a mediocre ride experience compared to other B&Ms. And I have also ridden Kraken at SeaWorld Orlando. I really thought Kraken was an awesome and intense B&M roller coaster, but it turned out it was pretty mild and it was very shaky compared to the other B&M sit-down coasters. Coming in at number 6 is the Dive Coaster. The design features one or more near vertical drops that are approximately 90 degrees. These drops provide a moment of free falling for passengers. The experience is enhanced by unique trains that seat up to 10 riders per row, spanning only two or three rows in total. Another defining characteristic of the dive coasters is the holding brake at the top of the lift hill that holds the train momentarily right as it enters the first drop. But after the incredible view, and stomach dropping vertical dive, the coaster experience goes downhill from there in my opinion. The dive coasters often end with one or two inversions, but the inversions are often taken in a slow pace, which means the train goes through the inversions very, very slow. On another note, I personally think dive coasters gets too much hate from coaster enthusiasts. My personal favorite is Chikra at Busch Gardens Tampa. Chikra has decent pacing and it gives great positive Gs after the first inversion. The Flying Coaster comes in at the 5th spot. B&M debuted the Flying Coaster model with the so-called Air at Alton Towers in 2002. Now it is called Galactica. Riders take a seating position like on a regular inverted coaster with a chest harness and leg locks. They are then tilted 90 degrees so they assume a frontwards lying position. My first experience with a B&M Flying Coaster was Manta at SeaWorld Orlando. It exceeded my expectations. The pretzel loop in the back row is one of the most intense elements I've tried. The rest of the experience has emphasis on the feeling of flying, which actually was pretty nerve-wracking going up the first lift hill. The other inversions doesn't feel intense, but they are not too slow either like most of the dive coasters. The best flying coaster I've ridden isn't even a B&M, 
it is fly at Fantasia Land. This is an amazing flying coaster with near misses, airtime, and launches. It is quite unique. It was 100% a bucket list coaster. Back to the BMs. The pretzel loop and awesome flying experience makes it take the fifth spot on the list. The fourth spot goes to the sitting coaster. This model is old but still gold. This is B&M's traditional looping coaster design where riders are just sitting normally with their feet on the train. The coaster model includes awesome and very intense rides like Kumba, Hulk the Ride, Dragon Khan, Wildfire and so on. Many of you might think I've ranked this coaster too high, but hear me out, based on my rides on Kumba. Hulk the Ride and Dragon Khan, I can comfortably say that the traditional loopers were more intense and surprisingly smoother than the flawless coaster and of course the stand-up roller coaster design. The pacing and positive Gs are top-notch. I think Koomba is my favorite B&M looper ever. This might be a very controversial choice, but the third spot goes to the wing coasters. The winged roller coasters are a type of roller coaster where pairs of riders sit on either side of a roller coaster track in which nothing is above or below the riders. I don't feel like the wing coasters get much credit in the coaster enthusiast community. They often get described as crowd pleasers with slow pacing but I haven't ridden a slow wing coaster. My biased views tells me that many of the wing coasters in the US are a tad too slow with the exception of Thunderbird. That looks like one of the best wing coasters in the world. Phoenix at Toverland and Flukta Demonen at Heide Park are awesome and well paced wing coasters. The wing overdrop is awesome and the inversions feel whippy when you fly on the side of the track, not to mention the near miss elements. Even the prototype wing coaster Raptor at Gardaland exceeded my expectations. I would describe the wing coasters as great rides, but not perfect. Second place goes to the awesome inverted coaster. It is hard to say something negative about this coaster design. The first manufacturer to design inverted style coasters was Aerodynamics and Vekoma, but the Aero coaster had maintenance issues and many of the Vekoma SLCs are way too rough. In 1992, BM created the Batman ride, BM's first take on the inverted coaster, and they smashed it. Their design gave the riders a smooth yet intense and positive G heavy ride experience. And the trains have a large capacity seating four riders per row. Since 1992, they have sold many inverted coasters around the world. The latest was Monster at Gronalund, and they've also started to create family inverted designs. Bush Gardens will get one of those in 2024 with Phoenix Rising. The only critique I can give this design is the lack of airtime on the BM inverted coasters. But that doesn't matter when my favorite inverted coaster, Montu, makes my leg feel numb after one ride. Then I suddenly forget about airtime. Speaking of airtime, the number one spot goes to their hyper coaster, of course. And this category also includes their giga coasters on the web page. A hyper coaster is a roller coaster with a height or drop measuring greater than 200 feet and under 300 feet. And the giga coasters are between 300 and 400 feet. Man, oh man, I love hyper coasters. These coasters give sustained amount of airtime on every hill, and that is their purpose. They always start with a huge stomach dropping first drop, especially in the back row, and that is just the start of the ride. BM Hyper or Giga coasters are often the favorite coaster at almost every park they're in. Of course, I need to mention that I'm a sucker for airtime. My favorite BM Hyper coaster is Shambhala at Port Aventura. Shambhala gives a violent airtime on the front row. The first hill feels like a 6 second floater hill. Mako at SeaWorld Orlando gets a strong second place. That's it for this video. What are your thoughts on my rankings? Do you agree or disagree with my choices? If you liked the video, feel free to give it a like to support the channel. See you in the next video. Bye bye.